With the fall just around the corner, now is an ideal time to enjoy the sights and sounds of birds. But you don't have to travel too far to see the flying creatures. With a few simple tips, it's easy to turn your backyard into a retreat for colorful new friends. Joining me now from the Stuart B. McKinney National Wildlife Refuge is Rick Potman, the Wildlife Refuge Manager, and Sean Roach, the Visitor Services Manager. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Uh, Sean, let's start with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the refuge? Sure. It's about 1,000 acres of federal conservation land all along the coast goes from Westbrook all the way to Greenwich mm -hmm. so it's about 70 miles and the units are very small in acreage but they're very important to wildlife especially birds so that's what we're going to be talking a little bit about today people can come to visit um, almost all of the units and learn about different things walk the trails it's neat and the refuge actually started about 40 years ago uh, through donation so most people um, most most units were actually donated or added in the early 80s by Stuart B. McKinney, who was a Connecticut. Hence the name. Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> um, and Rick, let me ask you, why do you think bird watching and, and building these bird houses is just so popular? Well, I think because people are very interested and in it. it's a chance to connect with our wildlife heritage. So they can go back, you can, you know, then all of a sudden it becomes a test. How many birds can you identify? And then you say, well, boy, I want this kind of bird in my backyard, so I, I need to give out thistle. So I'm going to ah. try this so that you can actually be a little refuge manager in your backyard. And also it gives you a little bit of a um, sensation that you're helping. That's you're true, You're helping right? conserve these, these animals that honestly need some of these animals need help. And um, Rick, you said it was a, a pretty interesting time of the year to see birds. Why don't you explain that to our viewers why? Yes, well, the, the migration is afoot. A okay. So we already have birds that live in Canada that are actually going to winter here in Connecticut, if you believe people want to winter here in Connecticut. <laughs> so they're going to fly on down here. And so we're going to start seeing them. But also our other birds, like warblers and stuff like that, are going to start massing up into larger groups. And they're going to start migrating down south. Very good. Well, we have some pictures here about some, uh, some of the birds we could see this time of year. Yes. So we'll put them up. And if you guys could explain what we're oh. looking at. Well, this is an American goldfinch, and he's one that we'll have out here all year. So if you uh, have a thistle feeder out in your backyard, you'll just have an explosion of this uh, uh, yellow color through, through the pretty. white winter. Yes. And then we'll move along. The next one, I, oh, I see it out there. Okay. <laughs> this is a great egret. Uh, these are birds that are adapted to live by the coast. And that's one of the nice things about the refuge is that we have a different amount of habitats. We have some habitats that are wet, wetlands. And if you came out and visited us at our Great Meadows unit, during the low tide, mm -hmm. you would see just a blanket of white dots on the ah, green marsh because they're great. coming in to feed off the fish during the low tide. Very good. And one last picture here. I think I've seen that one before. Yes, he's, he's our nuthatch, and, and he's very easy to tell if you have him in the feeder because he will actually walk down the tree. So his oh. head will be pointing down the ground. He's one of the few birds that will actually move up and down the tree like that. Very good. All right, so you guys brought some props with you. Sean, why don't you explain to us the necessity of water and that type of thing? Sure. Water is very important. Food, water, shelter are the biggest things that people can provide right in your backyard to different birds and, and other wildlife. So water can, of course, come through a bird bath, but it can also, if you have a smaller space, mm -hmm. if you don't want to spend a lot of time emptying a bird bath, something simple like this bird waterer can be you know, bought for less than $10 and just hung very close to your feeder. And that way you can provide a fresh water source, which isn't always available. Sure. You see birds drinking out of puddles and things. You don't know it might be contaminated water. So this is a great solution. If you do have a bird bath, mm -hmm. it's great to keep it moving if there's any way. They sell sort of solar powered uh, motors that can move right. the water, attract more birds, keep it fresher, things like that. There are also lots of different types of feeders. Mm. If you've ever been to a store in the bird section, you might have seen different things like this. So this is sort of your typical feeder, not squirrel proof, but it is made out of cedar, so it's much more durable, gonna last probably a while. It has space for seed, where these clear plastic panels are, mm -hmm. and also places for suet cakes. Okay. So there's a cake of suet. We recommend that you don't use that in really warm weather because it actually melts and it can coat the bird's wings. Oh, we don't want that so to happen. So you wouldn't okay. want that to happen. Um, this is supposed to be squirrel proof. We can talk a little bit more about squirrels later. And this is um, you know, a very inexpensive plastic feeder that you can get 
for all types of birds. It accepts different types of seed. Um, and we can talk a little bit about the seeds that you can buy. Yeah, I see worms over here. Yeah, worms <laughs> as well. So mealworms, a lot, a lot of people don't realize, of course, that many birds are not going to come to their feeders because they don't eat seed. So you can actually mix this in or put that out separately to attract the meat-eating birds, mm -hmm. um, chickadees, warblers, and things like that. This is thistle seed. So the nice gold finches, the house finches, purple finches love this. Okay. It's very small. So traditional feeders, it's not, not always the best for. But you can buy this and the feeder to go with it if you really like those finches in your yard. All right. And Sean, we have about 30 seconds left. And I do want to talk about okay. this. In fact, Sean, why don't we, uh, Rick, why don't you explain how, what a great idea this is? Well, this, this is how people help the birds set up homes. We have nest boxes, but there are only about two dozen birds in North America make nests. The other one makes their nest out in the wild. And this provides that furniture. So it's like a little a furniture idea. store. So There's they, some yarn, right? Yeah, so the birds can come, take those up, lay, lay it on their nest. I love this. And then you would just hang it up like you You hang it up and you can watch the birds come and take it. All right, very good. And what I think is also great is that we were making a comparison here. In here, uh, these were back from the '40s. Yes, you guys have been helping people make uh, bird sanctuaries for quite some time. Yes, right? yes. <laughs> here we are from today, but uh, pretty easy stuff there. And you also have the open house coming up. Yes, uh, it will be an opportunity for people to come out and visit us on Faulkner Island. It's on the second, third, fourth, and sixth, and you can visit our Facebook page to learn more about that. Very good. All that information is up there on the screen. Of course, we'll link it up from our website. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Thank this is you. a fun activity. Thank you. It's great. Thank All you. Right.